In this, our final section, I want to show you a different way to solve the quadratic equation. Last time, well, we built up through three parts, from seeing the quadratic formula and trying to plug in and use it, to seeing where it all came from, to seeing how it actually works based on turning algebra into geometry and doing a trick there. So this time, I want to show you in advance of trying to work with cubic equations next time, a way to be a little bit more flexible with equations to make it easier to do things like solve the quadratic equation. So let's start with our usual quadratic equation. And for the third time now, we're going to want to divide through by a to get a new equation. But instead of doing that this time, I mean, this is like, I mean, literally the third time we've done this, but it feels like we've done it a hundred times. So, you know, I believe that we can divide through by a. You believe that we can divide through by a. So let's stop kidding around and just pretend that that first coefficient is always going to be one because it's such an easy thing to do to get rid of it. So instead of that quadratic equation being our general quadratic equation, I'd like to think about this as our general quadratic equation. Because any quadratic equation we had that had a non uh, a equals one first term there, we'd take care of it no problem, right? It turns out, at least if you're willing to agree with me that this is no longer our quadratic equation and this is our quadratic equation, that um, I don't know if you actually stopped and tried to solve for x before we learned how to complete the square last time, but this is the tricky bit. It's hard to get rid of that x term or do anything good with it. Now it turns out that there's a simple substitution you can do that just gets rid of it to begin with. Let me show you. So instead of x in this equation, I'm going to write y minus b over 2. And I'm going to substitute this in. So instead of x squared, I'm going to write y minus b over 2, and all of that squared, plus b times y minus b over 2, plus c equals 0. And now I'm going to have to do some foiling. <laughs> by and a plus by. Those terms go away. And to write things a little bit nicely up here, oh whoops, I'm sorry, this should be b squared over 2, not b squared over 4. Otherwise everything goes away, and I guess things get way easier then. Uh, y squared. I know fractions make people itch, but let's think about this a little bit more generically. Whatever b squared is, this is half of it. And whatever b squared is, this is a quarter of it. And if I've got positive a quarter and negative a half, then I've got negative a quarter. So I've got y squared minus b squared over 4 plus c equals 0. Or once I start putting things on the right side of the equation, this is b squared over 4 minus c. And take the square root, y equals plus or minus the square root of b squared over 4 minus c. And there's my solution to the quadratic equation. I didn't have to complete the square. I didn't have to do anything crazy with geometry. I just made this very simple substitution here. Now, you might complain, well, you gave me a formula for y. This solves for y. I, y wasn't even around when we started. I wanted to solve for x. But notice that if I plug in for y and get a value here, then I can plug that value in here and take another b over 2 away from it, and that solves for x just fine. So it turns out you can solve the quadratic equation without completing the square, without the quadratic formula, without really much trouble at all. Now something that I'm going to ask you to do as homework again is to accomplish this back substitution and clean it up and look at how similar this is to the quadratic formula that we get anyways. In fact, if you go two steps back and go to the a and b and c there, uh, you'll get the exact same quadratic formula. But go ahead, do the calisthenics, make sure you're staying flexible with your algebra and that it all feels good to do. Okay, now I wanna talk about this linear substitution here because it's not just good for quadratic equations. It's gonna be super useful to us next time when we try and tackle the cubic equation. The idea is instead of x, we write in y minus something. And that something is specifically chosen so that we get rid of the next lowest term. In any polynomial, 
we can do this. We can always get rid of the second highest coefficient by a substitution that looks like this. And we just have to find the right thing to take away. And once we realize that we can do this every single time, then when we say we want to be able to solve the general cubic equation, just like I've gotten rid of the a here, we'll say, oh, well, let's just talk about the ones that are a little bit simpler because we know we could always make it just a little bit simpler. So when you go to Wikipedia or to one of our books and they're talking about how, the, how these Italians solved the cubic equation, they're always gonna talk about solving what's called the depressed cubic equation. So let me show you what that looks like. It's the same thing that we've done just here. And because we can always get rid of that next highest term, being able to solve a depressed cubic is just as general of a solution as being able to solve any cubic. So what would our general cubic solution or equation be? Again, we're going to get rid of that first non-one term, that non-one coefficient from here on out forever. A general cubic would look something like, and like I said, I can take y minus something and write that in instead of x. Now here's the question, what do I choose to make the x squared term go away? I'm going to claim that that something is going to be b over 3. And that when I do this and plug in, I'm going to get y minus b over 3 cubed. <laughs> Looks like a whole mess of multiplying and adding to do. But before you do it with all the letters and in sort of full detail, I want you to spend some time and get used to doing it this way. Look at it structurally. What kind of an answer are we going to get out of here? We're going to get y cubed plus some y squared stuff plus some y stuff plus a term without any y's in it at all. We're going to get from this factor here y squared plus some y stuff plus some stuff without y in it. Here we're gonna get c times y times c times some, some other letter stuff, some other letter stuff there. And in general, we can keep track of things by power so that we know this is gonna be y cubed. Now my claim is that we're gonna end up with a total cancellation of all the y squared things. And then we're gonna end up with some number of y's. And then we're gonna end up with some other number that doesn't have any y's in it. And so we're going to end up with an equation that's y cubed plus something y plus something n equals zero. And in general, this is the form of cubic that's known as the depressed cubic. And because it's so simple to go back and forth from the cubic that has a quadratic term to one that doesn't have a quadratic term, this depressed cubic is treated again as the general situation of the cubic that we're trying to solve. And from way back in the first episode of uh, Anatomy of Algebra, we learned that in 1494, Luca Pacioli said, no one will ever learn how to solve this general cubic. It was only a few years later, well, 50 years later, that Cardano published his book, at which point everyone knew how to solve the cubic. So that's a great place to leave off today. We learned all about the quadratic, sort of where it comes from, how we can believe this geometric formula or this algebraic formula that we all are told to memorize based on some geometric underpinnings. And next time we'll see Cardano's trick, how they were able to use a very similar geometric trick to be able to pry apart this depressed cubic equation. And maybe also you'll remember that way back in the beginning of dealing with the quadratic, we had some questions about what, would ha what was actually happening when we plugged into that formula. Well, with cubics, the questions about what it actually means to plug into the formula and what you get when you do that end up being a little bit harder to ignore. And so we'll also see the directions that that leads us. So until then, this has been Anatomy of Algebra. I'm Chris Holden and enjoy your day.